Hello. In this Auto X Advice video, I'm going to be discussing how to replace the rear axle differential breather that Nissan has had issues with from 2005 to current. The issue is in the Nissan Frontier, like with what you see behind me, their Xterra, and their Titan. What happens is this differential breather ends up clogging in some way. And when you're driving down the road and over time, it builds up pressure. And that pressure uh, needs to be relieved somewhere. And it ends up breaking the seal and causing issues with those seals that need to be replaced. So if you get under your vehicle and you take a look at the end of the axle on either end, and you see where it looks oily and wet, that's pretty much a good indication that you have an issue with the breather itself. Now, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to replace it with an aftermarket breather. Um, I've got some sockets to do that. I've got a bar fitting and a hose clamp and plastic ties and some extra hose. Um, all of this will be on and in the description uh, when I post it, so you won't have to worry about uh, you know, looking all of this stuff up. What I'm going to end up doing is most of the time the breathers sit on the axle themselves. I'm going to take the extra hose and I'm going to extend that up into the rear tail light. So um, I'm also going to end up checking the fluid in my rear axle, making sure that it's up to the level that it needs to be. I've got some fluid here, I've got some sockets to take care of that uh, when I uh, check that out. So let's go ahead and let's get started. To get started, the best thing to do is to remove the spare tire and get that out of the way so you can have access to that uh, differential breather that's already on there. Uh, since I'm going to be extending my breather up into the back of the tail light, I'm going to. I've already removed the screws. I removed the tail light, and just let that hang to the side, and then. In my particular case with this aftermarket breather, I've got to attach it to the end of the hose. So I'm going to do that just by putting it into the end of the hose. And the easiest way to do that is with a socket and just by screwing it in. trimming off the end. And now getting my other parts together, which will be the uh, barb fitting that will go into the axle. And then I have this uh, <coughs> clamps to go around and uh, attach, when I attach the rubber hose down upon the rubber hose, I'll tighten that. So now it's time to get under the vehicle. So you're looking at the rear axle on the rider side of the Nissan Frontier. And these breathers are all on the same side. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this rear axle breather that I already have loosened up. I'm going to get my new barbed fitting. And that one is going to require a different size socket. And I'll have all of the information about what I'm installing here in the description. Now, some may question if this barb fitting needs to have Teflon tape or some sealant in there. And I'm going to say, do not put Teflon tape on it. You don't want those little fibers falling into the axle and clogging up the breather again. And if you do put some sealant on it, I would only do no more than halfway. So only up on this fitting, only halfway. Don't get in the, the sealant in any further down on the threads. In my case, I'm not going to use any sealant because 
none is really required it's a tapered fitting and it's tight and and if you think about it regular stock fitting never had any sealant on it to begin with and then also um, this is an open breather so if you were going to get any of that oil out it would come out through the breather itself uh, but that doesn't happen so I don't feel that there's any reason to put any sealant on there now one word of caution here is don't cross thread always do things by hand to start them out and then bring in your socket And that's good. And now we'll get the end of the hose on there. I'm going to tighten up the hose clamp. One thing to mention is that you don't necessarily need to extend your breather up to behind the tail light. However, I'm showing you guys how to do that. And also, if I wanted to do any uh, off-roading where my rear axle would be underwater, it's a good, safe way to do that. This particular breather has the same threads that can go right into your axle. And as long as you don't do a lot of off-roading, it's perfectly fine to have this type of breather um, just be attached to the axle. When securing the hose, make sure that you leave some excess in the line, like your brake line. Uh, when the axle is articulating up and down, uh, you want to make sure there's enough flex there so you don't snap the line or damage the line. And then also you want to make sure that you don't tie your hose to anything that has sharp edges over time that uh, will cut into that hose. As the hose comes up from the bottom, all that I've done was zip tie it to the electrical plastic conduit and it resides there now behind my tail light. The last thing that I'll do is go back under the truck and check the differential fluid. The way to do that is through this inlet bolt and I'm going to be using a 14 millimeter socket, hex socket, to get this bolt out. I've already went ahead and loosened it up. It does have a little bit of sealant on the threads and I will have to replace that sealant when I put the bolt back in. What you want to do is you just want to put your finger into the hole. You ought to bend it over. Um, if you do pull it out with differential fluid on it, that's good. If not, you're going to have to see how low it is and fill it back up if need be. Now, the other thing to mention before the end of the video is explaining to you uh, where to look for any fluid leaks if you do have a bad breather. Now, in this case, my fluid level is good. I would check this area here, like I said, at the end of the axles, right in here, for anything that looks oily or wet uh, behind there. And then also, like it may drip down on your rim, on your inner rim here, if you do have any breather issues. Obviously, there's other areas where it can leak from and it's hard to, hard to show you right here, but on the opposite side, you have your pinion, and it could leak on the other side of there as well. It could look wet. Now, again, all of what I see here on mine um, looks clean and looks dry. And with that said, that's the end of the installation and the differential check. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and hit like. Also, if you subscribe, 
you'll be able to get notified when the latest videos come out. If you have some extended questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. And thank you again for watching.